on the third topic, inshallah ta'ala, is going to be presented by Brother Muhammad Jubba, inshallah, and the topic is going to be the good friend and the bad friend. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi ta'ala wa barakatuh. In the name of Allah, the beneficent, the merciful. Praise be to Allah, we seek his help and his forgiveness. We seek refuge in Allah from our evils of our own soul and from our bad deeds. Whomever Allah guides cannot be led astray, and whomsoever Allah leaves astray cannot be guided. I bear, I bear witness that none has the right to be worshipped except Allah, and that Muhammad ibn Abdullah is his last and final messenger. Brothers and sisters in Islam, tonight I would like to give you and I a reminder about an important, one important aspect of our friends, one important aspect of our lives, and that is friendship. It's so important that where our Prophet Muhammad sallallahu said, a man is upon the religion of his friend, so let one of you look at whom he befriends. <clears throat> SubhanAllah, this hadith itself shows you that whoever you invite your life into and whomsoever you surround yourself into will definitely have an effect on you. Now tonight I will give you three friends and explain to you who they are. Those three friends, whether they benefit you or whether they will lead you to your destruction. The first friend is a sahib mantha. Now who is this friend? This is the kind of friend that only wanna benefits from you. He don't care about you. He doesn't worry about your problem. All he wants is from you. One good example would be, some of us might experience this, I don't know, but let's say you've been aiding a friend who is back home for the past five years. SubhanAllah, every time he calls you, whatever you, he asks of you or she asks of you, you just give it to him. You're trying to be a good Muslim, trying to do the right thing. But one day you lost your job, and this friend called you. Hey, bro, tonight I need a $200. Is there any way that you can send it for me? And you tell the brother, I'm really sorry. I just lost my job today. Is there any way you could ask somebody else or I could ask somebody else for you so that I could just give it to you or you could get it from that person and inshallah when I get back on my feet, I'll help you out. Now hearing that statement, suddenly the, the brother just ticks off. And he forgets about this five years that you've been aiding this friend. He makes it seem like this is the first time he asked you of something and you said, I don't have it. So he, puts, he goes out on the street, puts a bad name for you. Say so and so is so independent. Every time I ask him something, he doesn't give it to me. I mean, he makes you seem like you were worthless. All the effort that you did meant nothing. I know each one of us would have been mad. But in, our, in your heart that you know what you did. And you leave it to Allah. And brothers and sisters, that's the kind of friend. A sahib al manfa Now that brings us to the second friend. A sahib al -ludd. And brothers and sisters, be careful about this friend. Because this is the friend that will make you regret even associating with him. If not, even drinking the same cup with him. Because one day you will die, and this friend will be next to you. So who you choose today will matter later on. As they say, here in this country, life is too short, live it to the fullest, right? But hey, you live to the life to the fullest, but what about akhirah? How would you live? So let me give you a little detail about this kind of friend. Night and day, this friend calls you. Hey, so-and-so, let's go, man. That's a good movie coming out. Let's go watch it. Let's go to the cinema. And you're like, OK, let's go. I got nothing else to do anyway. He takes you to the hookah spot from 11 o'clock to 6 in the morning. SubhanAllah, for five hours, what are you doing in the hookah spot? 
I mean, what good are you getting from a hookah spot? That five hour you're, you're sitting there intoxicating your, 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 your own soul with filth and not knowing the effect that it will have on you. All you care is about that five, ten minute good time that you're having. The little buzz that you get out of it. And that in Yomul, in Yomul, in Yomul, uh, on the day of judgment, this friend, when he's brought with you, he will say, I don't know this person. I have no associate with this kind of person. And now let me give you a little proof of what I'm talking about tonight. In Surah Al-Furqan, Allah says, And remember the day when the dhalim, the wrongdoer, will bite his hands. He will say, Whoa, would that I had taken the path with the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Woe to me, would that I have never taken so and so as a friend. He indeed led me astray after the reminder had come to me. And shaitan is to a man ever deserter of the hour of need. This friend that you, saw, you thought he was your buddy, every night you guys kick it, every day you go out, that's that brother, yeah, that's my homie. I got his back. Does he got your back though? In day of judgment, he's, he's going against you. But when you guys were here, you're saying, oh, that's my buddy. He got my back. And I got his. But now, that was dunya. That was only tongue speaking, not the heart. That was just the tongue. Because in the day of judgment, tongue will be shut, right? Heart will be speaking. And what would your heart say? All he says is what he learned here. Or what she learned here. So if you don't take care of it, later on it will not save you. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in Surah Al-Zukhruf, in Surah Al-Qaf, his companion will say, Our Lord, I did not push him to transgress, but he was himself far astray. Look at that. SubhanAllah, that says a lot of things. This is the kind of person that you had, that you welcomed your life into, shared everything you had with, drank everything that he gave you, did whatever you guys do together. But today in front of Allah, he denies you. He never met you. You guys never did anything with each other. And Allah will say, while they're disputing in front of him, he will say, Allah will say, dispute not in front of me. I have already in advance sent you the threat. Dispute not with me. SubhanAllah. What do you think that person, their final home would be? Those two friends. One leading one another. And I would like to give you another example, which is happening tonight, as we speak. A brother will lead his friend to his own destruction, except if Allah guides him. And a sister will lead her sister to a destruction, except if Allah saved her. And that is happening tonight, downtown Seattle. There's a parade going on today. I don't know if you guys seen the news. I don't know if you guys heard the news. SubhanAllah, some of our sisters and brothers are saying, hey, are you going to that Twitters? Are you guys going to that club? Are you guys going to that party today? When you ask them, hey, are you, are you gay? They're like, no, but I just, I, I know a friend that's gay, but I want to support it. SubhanAllah, can you imagine that? And look what happened to Qawm al But here in our life, we see our own brothers and sisters, our son and daughters, supporting one another to come join a club that they have no associate with. That they shouldn't even be part of it. But that friend, that you're having that good time, what would he say about you tomorrow? What would that friend get into you? 
Would he help you? Take all your bad deeds? I'd be like, yeah, I'm the one who helped him out. I'll take his bad deeds. Let, let me give him his good deeds. Let me give him my good deeds. Would you say that? No. But look what, look what Allah says in Surah Al-Zukhruf. On that day, friends on that day will be foes to one another except Al-Muttaqoons. Those who are the pious, the righteous. Brothers and sisters, that brings us to our third friend, Sahib al fadila And this is, the, this is the part where we should ask Allah and praise Allah for associating us with those kind of companions. Your heart should smile for being next to them. Because those friends will save you. Those friends in Yom al will save you. You should even more welcome them around your family. Because every time that you are around this kind of friend, all you hear is the dhikr of Allah. The remembrance. He will call you. Hey, brother, let's go. There's a lecture going out in so-and-so masjid. Let's get take part of it, man. I want the ajr today. If not, brother, hey, fajr is up. Can you wake up? Let's go. I'll pick you up if you need a ride. Don't worry about it. I got you. That's the kind of friend. All he does is remind you of Allah. And every time you look at his face, all you, all you remember is Allah. SubhanAllah. Wouldn't my heart be happy if today your boss came to you? Hey, you're doing a good job today. You're going to get a raise. You know, you're going to move up to the next company. You're going to be the manager. Wouldn't each one of us be happy? Come home, tell your wife. You're like, yeah, man, I'm getting a raise today. The boss came to me and said, I'm getting a raise. And I'm sure each one of us will be happy. And think about that. From the rest of your life, your heart feeling that kind of happiness. Because this friend took you to a better place than you were before. And Surah Al-Zukhruf, to continue the ayat, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala would say, it will be said to the believers, my worshiper, no fear shall be upon you this day, nor shall you grieve, O you who believed in our ayat and were Muslims. SubhanAllah. Who were raised as Muslims? Each one of us today, our families are Muslims, our grandparents, and so on. Just count down the line. They're all Muslims. We should be proud of that. Each one of us should be proud of it. It's just sad that our youth in our time today, they are scared to call themselves Muslims. They are scared to even show that they have the characteristic of Muslim. If you see a brother wearing a thobe outside, you walk the other way around. Why is that? Why is it are we so afraid to be called a Muslim? Why are we so afraid to think that where it will save you in the day of judgment when you're in front of Allah? Why are we so scared? Why is it so easy to go into Masya than to praise Allah? But this is the time that we live in, right? Each second, if not minute, if not an hour, that one of our brothers and sisters are being locked up each day. If you go to the juvenile counties, mother standing outside, father standing outside. Why? It's not that their son committed the crime. No. Half of these people that are in juvenile, their son and daughters did not commit the, the actual crime. But they were with a friend, and that friend led them to that. Whatever that friend did in this, in this country, whatever that friend did, you will get the same sentence as the one who did it. 
even though you have nothing to do with it. You didn't pull the trigger, you didn't stab the man, you didn't touch the person, it don't matter. You get the same sentence. Same thing as the sisters. SubhanAllah, one of the brothers was telling me the other day that he seen some sisters that were in, in the airport, drunk like crazy. 19, 20, 22 years old. One, their car got towed, the other one was arrested on the same spot. And the other one is walking around the airport, she drunk. Why? That's who she hanged out with. SubhanAllah, brother and sister in Islam. To conclude my topic for the night, you guys, each one of us should look at who we have as a contact. Who do we share information with? Who we have in our houses? Because those, those who you associate with will lead you whether either to a happiness or to sadness. And you know there's no turning back. But that's over. Once you're buried, that's it. Ain't nothing coming to you except your good deeds. So inshallah, brothers and sisters, tonight if you ever get a chance, call somebody, tell them, hey, I love you for the sake of Allah. Do you mind coming with me to the masjid? Bring anybody. Doesn't matter who it is. Even if you had dispute with the friend, hey, say, hey, I'm sorry, man. You know, it was my fault. Even though it's not your fault, say, it's my fault. So inshallah, do you, do you mind uh, if we hang out? It will surely save you one day, inshallah. Zakallah khair. Takbir. Allahu Akbar. Oh